Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on quadratic and harder graphs. So there'll be quite a few videos on this topic, we'll cover a couple of key skills in each one, and in the last video we'll look at some example questions. So the first skill then is quadratic graphs, uh, and quadratic graphs have the general form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now a, b and c can be any number, uh, including zero, so sometimes you'll just see a graph such as the one on the left here, y equals x squared, so in that case uh, b and c are 0 and a equals 1, uh, so it, the expression just becomes y equals x squared. So another thing to point out in quadratic graphs is that the graphs are curved, and they can either be sort of u or n shaped, and that depends on the a term, uh, so that's the coefficient of x squared. So uh, if a is greater than 0, so 1 for instance, as it is in y equals x squared, then the graph that you get is sort of u shaped, and if a is less than 0, so as, as in this graph on the right here, uh, then the graph will be n-shaped. So we normally describe these in terms of a minimum point, so that's the lowest point on the graph, or a maximum point, uh, so that's the maximum point on the graph, the highest point. So these maximum and minimum points are known as turning points, uh, but we'll cover those in a separate topic. For now, let's move on to cubic graphs. So cubic graphs have the general form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Uh, so as you can see, there's a term in x cubed now, as well as a term in x squared, x, and just a number on the end, which is actually a term in x to the power 0, uh, which is obviously just 1, uh, but we don't need to worry about that for now. So in terms of cubic graphs, uh, you need to know that their general form uh, has two turning points. So that gives rise to this s-shaped graph that we see here. So this is just one example, uh, but as you can see, there's two turning points here and here. Now sometimes this S shape might actually be quite flat in the middle, so it might look something like this. Uh, it's still a cubic graph, uh, so you just have to be aware of that. Uh, but in terms of plotting a graph, uh, so this applies to quadratics as well, the best way to do it is to use a table of values. Uh, so your table might look something like this. So you have X on the top and Y on the bottom, and you just pick some X points that you want to plot. So here on the graph on the right, we have X values going from negative 2 to 1. Uh, so maybe we do it in 0.5 intervals, so we'd have minus 2, minus 1.5, minus 1, minus 0.5, 0, and so on, up to 1. Uh, and then we just plug these x values into the equation, and then we get the corresponding y values uh, by setting that equation equal to y. And then we just plot the coordinates and join them up with a line. So if you'd like to see this process in detail, uh, then the last video on this topic will cover two examples. Uh, one will be plotting a quadratic and one will be plotting a cubic graph. Uh, so you get to see it all in action there. If you'd like to get some more practice with this topic, you can take our online exam. It's available through our revision platform. Uh, if you go to the test, you'll find loads of different questions, a variety of different question types, and you get instant feedback on each and every one of them. Uh, so if you're interested, then click the link below and it will take you straight there.